interested in high end beauty retouch but before we start probably you want to know who am i why i am so confident that i think this course is really great and why i'm able to teach you this so well at first i'm going to tell you a few words about myself and then we are going to have a walk through the steps we're going to do during this course for over three years i've been uploading free photoshop tutorials on youtube where i've got over 30,000 subscribers and i taught hundred thousands of people so i really know how to teach and what to teach since a while i've been doing premium photoshop courses around the web and that's the one of the course you could find right now and this is the course about high-end beauty retouch it doesn't matter if you're a very advanced user or maybe you're just getting into beauty retouch i believe this course is well explained so you shouldn't have any difficulties to follow this course let's have a look on the final result of our retouch i just want to show you the image i started with that was the raw image i started with and that's the result i ended up with as you can see there's a lot of details that actually changed and of course it was a lot of work you can have a look on the skin on the nails on the lips and many other details and compare this with the result after so let's start from the beginning and see what i'm going to teach you as you can see I split this PSD file for three sections. The reason was because the file was too big and I wanted to keep this for you. And in this course, I'm giving you PSD file, of course, so you can follow all of the steps and see how I did specific things. I started just with simple corrections. As you can see, I need to turn all of this off to make sure we're going to follow this very well. And this is the original. It's not raw image, because at first, before retouching, I did a raw conversion. I show you how to do simple raw conversion. And after that, we're going to do just a basic retouch. Basic retouch is all about using basic retouching tools and removing some simple spots and nothing really difficult. As you can see, it's very small difference, just the main points of the image. After this, I was sorting out the hair, which is a bit more advanced in this case. And I'm showing you absolutely the best ways how to do the hair retouch. After the hair retouch, of course, we need to liquefy our image to improve the shape, not to change the shape. I don't like the word to change the shape, but to improve the shape of our model to give her a bit more character. After this, I'm showing you a really powerful technique, which is frequency separation. And what I have to say, this technique is overused recently. So I'm showing you how to use this in the right way without overusing it and without destroying your image. I'm showing you how to work on low frequency layer, on the high frequency layer, how to work with the details, how to work with the tones, and of course, sorting out the colors inside which are of course tones so that's a very important step however not the most important as many people can think because frequency separation still is basic retouching technique to speed up your workflow after this i sorted out the pores which you can see cannot see actually from the distance so let's zoom this image and have a look into the eye area so i want to make sure you can see it as you could see before we had some really not really nice white dots so this step showing you how to sort this out and remove the white pores from the skin after this basic retouch we go in into our details section so once again i'm going to turn all of this off In this detail section, I started up from the lips. And I'm showing you how to retouch the lips in a really nice and natural way without overdoing this. You can see the result before and result 
after it's really nice and supple change. After this step we are going into the eyes and this is really great work. I'm showing you how to make them a bit bigger if we need that, how to retouch them, but the best thing I'm giving you resources to speed up your workflow. I'm giving you action how you can really quickly retouch the eyes and also I'm showing you how to draw eyelashes if you need that. Very often problem are the nails. So in this course also I'm showing you how to retouch the nails and get the really perfect look. After all of this, we will go into the main important section, which is Dutch and Burn. I'm going to show you two of the most important Dutch and Burn techniques. I'm going to show you how to work with Dutch and Burn, how to work with local Dutch and Burn, global Dutch and Burn, how to Dutch and Burn the hair, and how to do final color corrections on the dodge and burn. So it's really a complete guide to dodging and burning, which is the most important section and the most important thing about high-end beauty retouch. You can have a look at the image before dodging and burning, and after this you can have a look at the image after dodging and burning, and you can see it's a really massive change. After this details section and Dutch and Burn, we go into the final section, which is our final adjustments and final color corrections. So in final adjustments, I'm showing you how to do a final sharpening on the image, which you can notice when you have closer look. So for the image, for example, when the image go into printing, as you can see, it's really good to sharpen the skin a little bit. I'm showing you how to adjust the colors in a really simple way to make this even more beautiful and also how to adjust the contrast of the image. So these are the steps you're going to learn and I believe both of us are going to have great fun. So don't wait any longer and let's go to our course. Okay, and the first step we usually do when we start our work with uh, beauty retouch and when we get the picture off, we have to do a raw conversion. Uh, probably I don't have to do this because everyone knows this, but don't worry if you get JPEG image, you can follow my steps easily in Photoshop, but of course I have raw image, I'm going to start with raw conversion and we always start with raw conversion. We have to set up the colors, we have to set up the contrast, etc. Everything to prepare our image to make it comfortable to work in Photoshop. So let's start from the most basic things, which is down here. As you can see, we have some settings. I'm going to open this. And the first thing is uh, color space. And um, I'm not going to talk much about this because it's not that important, but just very quickly, we usually work with space Adobe RGB, the most flexible uh, color space, the most popular, all the professionals work with this. And something a bit more important is depth over here. Uh, you have two choices, 8 bits channel and 16 bits channel. If you have 8 bits channel, I recommend you to change this into 16 bits. We're going to get the higher color depth, which is uh, very important when we work with um, lights, when we brighten up some areas, our depth is uh, higher. We won't get any noise and anything like this. If you would work with 8 bit channel, our color steps are too large so we can easily notice steps uh, between one color and other color. We want something very soft, very deep, so I recommend you to work with 16-bit channel. Our size of the file will be larger, but uh, it's just better for the image and for your workflow. In the next lesson, I'm going to explain a bit more about differences between 8-bit and 16-bit depth. Resolution, of course, is 300. It's resolution for printing, etc. And of course, about the size, I'm not going to resize this because it doesn't really matter and I can do this later in Photoshop. So here's our settings. 
as I said, remember this and work with pretty much the same. I'm going to hit OK. And now let's work with camera and our settings over here. First of all, as you can notice, this image is pretty much cold. I want something a bit warmer, but not too much. Do not make this look too burnt. So I'm going to pull up just a bit the temperature to make it maybe suitable. So go slowly and I think maybe around this or maybe it was even too much. I think this is a bit more suitable. About tint, I'm not going to go of course into green colors because as you can see it doesn't look so well. So I'm going to keep this pretty much the same as it was and I'm not going to go into magenta too, ma too much because as you can see this image will be too red. So I'm going to keep this universal as it was. Then of course we can work a bit with contrast. Just have a look how does it works. And I don't want to pull up the contrast too high because as you can see if I'm going to work with the hair later on it will be a bit more difficult. So I'm just going to keep it natural or even pull it down a little bit but not too much to make this area brighten. But what I recommend to not experiment with a contrast because it doesn't have much point. But the thing I really do work is the shadows. As I was talking about the hair, they are a bit into darkness and it's always retouching easier when it's a bit brighter. So I'm going to pull up some of the shadows. It's going to help me with retouch and I'm not bothered about retouch because I'm about shadows because I'm going to set them up later. Of course about whites we're not going to pull it down because it will be a bit more difficult so a bit up and blacks can you do the same but not too much I'm just doing for this image I find this easier for me and um, to retouch and the most important thing is here temperature and just a bit here you can work and set up you can actually pull down some shadows and you have to bright make something very universal to work with Photoshop but the most important are colors and the last thing I'm doing actually I find this helpful for the texture. We can zoom this in and as you can see when we pull this up our texture is a bit more visible. When we pull this up down we actually soften the image and well as a result could be nice. It's not really nice when we lose in the texture of the image. So what I recommend you add just a little bit clarity to make your texture more visible and it always look good because beauty retouch has to have some texture. We cannot smooth out the skin but about this I'm going to talk a bit more later as well. So that's kind of uh, basic steps. You can do something similar. Of course that's the thing we just have to do. About vibrance of course you can work a little bit with this but I wouldn't go down if we have some natural light. Saturation I usually go out because saturation might be a bit destructive so I usually don't work much about this. But okay when we are done with this basic raw conversion we are ready to start working in uh, Photoshop. Just make sure that everything is right. Work with 16-bit depth, set up your colors to make your image looking nice for working in Photoshop. So when you are ready, just open the image in Photoshop, maybe. So I'm going to see a bit more here. Okay. Open image. And now your image will be visible in Photoshop and we are ready to work with our image. And right now, before we start our uh, retouch, I want to do some nodes, which is uh, very important. It gives you the view on the things we have to do. Let's zoom this image a little bit so you will see this a bit better. Okay, maybe maybe somewhere here. And I'm going to create some help layer just for now to show you a few things. And as you can see, 
we have some of the spots on the face. Some of the bigger spots, few of them is um, really smaller ones. But let's start with the big ones. The first thing we have to do, we have to get off of such a really not good looking big spots that exist over here. So there is more of this and all of this it's something unwanted. We don't, don't want this, all of the red spots etc. Probably on the neck. Such a things like this you don't have to remove but um, if it's not that specific we can actually remove this. So here's quite many of this. So the big spots are the first thing we have to remove. Then when we zoom this image a bit more we'll have a bit smaller spots and I'm going to do some dots right now as you can see a lot of this over here on the nose. This kind of spots are really unwanted as well. So we have to handle this. There will be more of this. The next thing after this, of course, we have something more than just a spot. When we look at the hair, and especially when we zoom this in, in some areas from the distance, it's sometimes difficult to notice. We have really a lot of unwanted hair. We have a lot of wrong makeup because you can notice here it doesn't look so well but uh, yeah this kind of hair like over here we have to do something with that we can remove this for sure this area we have to remove this one we have to retouch them a bit to make them look better and as you can see here's a lot of areas like this with hair and we have to remove this stray hair so we will take care of this for sure over here and then rest of the hair so that's all of the things you have to do in the beauty retouch uh, to sort out the skin at first because actually 